we missing? Are we missing? I think we might be missing one. Is it? Can you peek? Is there any one, one of the camera coming down? Because it's just a few minutes, then I'll, I'll wait for him. But it's normally we got none. Okay, we'll just get started then. All right, well, thanks everyone for being here. Also, uh, thanks to our uh, media folks and, and staff uh, for um, joining us every week for the past year uh, when it comes to our weekly press conferences. Uh, while we're available throughout the week to answer any questions, uh, we, we appreciate folks uh, um, coming out and talking about the stuff that we have going on here at City Hall all year long. Uh, this is our last uh, press conference uh, of the year, so we have a lot of stuff we want to cover. Uh, but of course, uh, after uh, over the next couple of weeks, uh, feel free to reach out if there's anything else uh, that um, comes up that, that you all need, need uh, information on. We're happy to provide that. So first, going to talk a little bit about uh, the United Way. And uh, really, th this time of the year, uh, we usually have the uh, United Way on our, our show, uh, which we did last month uh, with Pete, who's the CEO, and talks about uh, some of the great programs that United Way has going on uh, during the holiday season and really what we can be doing as a community uh, to come together and uh, help, help those in need during the holiday. Uh, so I'd like to invite up uh, Abel, April, April. Abel, right? Uh, Abel. Uh, Frederick, he's the Vice President of the Community Impact with the United Way to discuss ways in which uh, we can all, uh, work to get back to the community this holiday season. Uh, so he's with the United Way. Abel, would you like to come up? Thank you, Mayor Whipple. Good morning, everyone. My name is Abel Frederick. I'm the Vice President of Community Impact here at your United Way of the Plains. The holiday season is here, and as we continue to field questions from big-hearted Wichitans who are passionate about giving back to the community they love, we want to clue you in on a few volunteer opportunities and opportunities where you can donate. The first opportunity I'd like to clue you in on, you know, being a part of this team, we do some very impactful work, and one of those impactful projects is the VITA Free Tax Program. This tax program last year served over 6,000 Wichitans, providing free tax services and returns for people who make $60,000 or less. That program brought $7.9 million in returns back to this community. What do we need from you? We need assistance with administrative efforts. We need assistance with uh, people who need their taxes filed. And we will train you to do that. Uh, we'd like you to sign up at our website, unitedwaytheplains.org. Please feel free to reach out to any of my staff or myself to see how you can get signed up. The next volunteer opportunity I'd like to clue you in on is our point in time count. Homelessness is an issue here in Wichita in which we are all concerned and passionate about. The point in time count takes place Thursday, January 26th, from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. This is done through our Impact ICT Continuum of Care, a coalition led by United Way of the Plains that works to make homelessness rare, brief, and non-reoccurring. Volunteers will be trained to collect data in a caring and considerate manner for those who are homeless. The data will be used to make local funding decisions, study trends, and reach underserved persons and increase awareness about those who are unhoused. Also, you know, it's done during the coldest time of the year. So this allows us to get true access and true data on those who are not accessing our homeless services. So this is a very important volunteer opportunity. The last volunteer opportunity I'd like to clue you in on is our Opportunity on the Plains investment panels. So if you are familiar with United Way, you know that we also provide direct services, but in addition to that, we fund nonprofit organizations to do impactful work in our community. I do not make those decisions. Pete Nahara does not make those decisions. The community does. We field and take in money from this community to do impactful work. We want to be good stewards of our donor dollars. So why not join us and help us make the decisions on where your donor dollars go? 
You will find many other opportunities to volunteer with local nonprofits, but we need your assistance at United Way. The volunteer opportunity from Opportunity on the Plains takes place from February to March, but we would like you to sign up by December 31st. We will train you on the needs of this community that we are trying to address. We will train you on what our strategy is in terms of addressing issues in health, education, financial stability, and basic needs. And we will gather for about five to six hours after you grade and rank applications to make decisions on where we can get the best bang for our buck. I would like to talk to you a bit about donating now. All area nonprofits could use your assistance to help the work that they do to improve the community. Please consider donating directly to a worthy area nonprofit or contribute funds at unitedwayoftheplain.org slash donate so that we can help our neighbors and friends who are struggling. Last year, United Way of the Plains helped people in South K Central Kansas over 400,000 times. What does that mean? That means for every $1 you invest in United Way of the Plains, we return $2.20 worth of impact back to this community. In closing, the team at United Way of the Plains thanks our area residents for partnering with us to lift up our community, lift up our neighbors, and ensure that everyone has the opportunity to reach their full potential. I want to continue this work in 2023, and I'm excited about what's going to happen. I want us all to live united. Thank you all, and happy holidays. Mayor Whipple. Uh, thank you, Abel, and to United Way for all you are doing. Uh, it's it's not really on the agenda, but I do want to bring it up because you brought it up so so well about uh, homelessness in our community uh, and really how we we all um, uh, are, are concerned for our unhoused uh, uh, neighbors. Uh, we do have. Uh, Thanks to the brainstorming of our uh, homeless outreach team with, with our police department, uh, with, uh, along with a, a meeting we had where a small business uh, advisory council a few weeks back, uh, we came up with this idea of having these little pamphlets. Uh, and basically, we have folks who are unhoused who will go into a business uh, to, to get warm. And we have business uh, uh, owners throughout the community uh, wanting to give folks information uh, on where they can find a 24-7 shelter, where they can find a phone, uh, basically where you can find the different resources uh, throughout our community that addresses uh, the needs of folks who, who are experiencing homelessness. And what we were able to do is we came up with uh, this brochure where, and where if you open it up, it's designed uh, to have all the shelter listings, uh, also the men's shelter, women's shelter, where to go for families, couples, uh, day shelter, uh, then also public facilities, and it even has uh, a map on it for folks who, who might not be as familiar uh, with um, the street names. Uh, you can utilize this map to find, again, all the services that we offer within our community. Uh, we are actually ordering another batch of these. We have a, we ordered about a thousand of them, uh, and we've had such a good response to people who have, have heard that we have these, and this is my first public uh, pu public, uh, public saying that we have these and they're available so I'm sure we'll even get more folks who, who would like some um, but we're going to be distributing these to uh, businesses that request them also uh, to folks who might uh, interact with people who are um, dealing uh, uh, with homelessness so uh, please reach out if you're interested in receiving some of these so we can continue uh, to get this information out so another way you can give back, in fact, is with the uh, life-saving blood donation. Uh, so just a reminder that from now until January 1st, you can join Wichita's first responders to be a lifesaver at the annual American Red Cross Wichita and Cedric County Battle of the Badges Blood Drive at the Wichita Blood Donation Center, which is at 707 North Main Street. During the annual Battle of the Badges Blood Drive, Cedric County EMS, Cedric County Fire Department, Cedric County Sheriff's Office, Wichita Fire Department, and the Wichita Police Department compete to see who can recruit the most blood donors. Everyone who comes uh, to give uh, can cast a vote to determine who will win the bragging rights of being uh, the champion of the Battle of the Badges. Uh, so all those who come to donate will receive a t-shirt uh, while supplies last as well. So we have some first responders here uh, with us. Uh, 
who would like to say a few words about this, about this, uh, this event. Good morning. My name is Joe Kennedy. I'm a lieutenant with Wichita Police Department. And I want to say uh, this last Tuesday, we started the 28th annual Battle of the Badges. Uh, we did the kickoff. Uh, like Mr. Mayor said that we will go in through January 1st. And a little bit of history on this. Uh, in the last 27 years, we've had over 30,000 donations. This year, the goal is for 1,500 donations of blood and platelets both. So I think we can exceed that number this year, uh, but what we need are donations. As a first responder uh, with law enforcement, fire, and EMS, all of us see the need for blood every day. So what we do is we come out and ask, because that was the biggest question by most people when you ask them if they donate, is they've never been asked. So this is our way of coming out and asking. We have a little friendly competition. We get to banter between each other. Um, after January 1st, what we'll do is we'll tally up the votes, and on Wednesday the 4th, they will come out with the results. Uh, there's a little traveling trophy, and of course, bragging rights for that following year. So uh, we get to do all that. But again, like Mr. Mayor says, when you donate, uh, you get the t-shirts, but you also get to vote. Uh, since nobody else is here, really the best one to vote for is law enforcement. So when you show up, just let them know, and, it's, and it just says law, so just vote for law. It's at the end of the voting ballot there. So um, a few of us did that on Tuesday when we did our donations. So. But please come out and donate. It takes about an hour of your time. We know it's busy end of the year with the holidays, end of the year itself. But just give us that time. You can help save somebody's life. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite up members of the uh, Billy Q. McRae Naming Committee. So in April, as some of you who follow the council uh, might re recall, the council appointed a naming committee to explore ways to honor the late former state legislator, county commissioner, and civil rights advocate, Billy McRae. So I'd like to uh, first uh, introduce the, the committee and, and to uh, really present the committee with a certificate of recognition for their ongoing work. Uh, and with that, come on up and you say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. Actually, I'm going to abdicate, give to um, Mr. Barfield. And the reason why is, well, first of all, let me state, my name is Melody McRae Miller. I am Billy McRae's daughter, one of his daughters, um, the younger daughter. And I'm going to let Mr. Barfield, James Barfield, actually speak to, uh, I would say, the intent and the, um, the love that is within what it is that this committee is, is embarking on. Thank you. Thank you very much, and good morning, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for having us, and I am James Barfield. Uh, and as the Mayor said, said uh, back in April, we approached the city council with a proposal to name a building uh, in honor of the late Senator Billy Hugh McRae. Uh, as he has stated, Mr. McRae served the city and the county and the state for over three decades as a city, as a county commissioner, as a state representative, and as a state senator. Now, prior to April, there had really not been any consideration given to honoring Mr. McRae, who, in my opinion, was the most effective and uh, the best African-American politician. And I, when I say that, Billy would never consider himself as a politician. He would refer to himself as a public servant. But he was the best that we've had in my entire lifetime. So basically what we've done is the council was uh, good enough to uh, name a commission to look at what we could accomplish and to name a monument uh, in honor of Mr. Billy McRae and his many years of service to the city, the state, uh, and the county here in Sedgwick. So basically we've met about four times and we've made a few uh, decisions upon basically what we would like to see uh, in the uh, honor of Mr. McRae. And namely, we first decided that we would like to see this done within a time frame of two to three years, if at all possible. 
We also decided that we would not prefer to have a street or a park named in his honor. We would prefer to have a monument. We also are scheduled to look at our next meeting, which will be in about, I believe, a week or two, to look at what properties might be available at this time that are owned, currently owned by the city and the counties, what real estate might be available. But we also want to consider what might be coming online within the next two to three years. So basically, that's kind of where we're at. And today, we just want to see uh, what input we can get from the city as to whether we're on the right track or not. And uh, so that's what we hope to look forward to. And again, again, we have a uh, certificate of appreciation uh, that, that we would like to recognize the committee with. Um, so be it hereby known to the city of Wichita in recognition of the Billy McRae Naming Committee issues the certificate of recognition for their dedication to the work of educating the public about the contributions of Billy McRae uh, to our community and identifying a public space to name in his honor. And again, it's not just uh, the committee. Um, uh, talking about the uh, uh, contributions of, of Mr. McCray, but also we're asking members of the community to reach out to the committee uh, to uh, w with ideas on, on what would be an appropriate uh, way to, to honor his service. Uh, so with that, I wanted to make sure you have one. Can we? Yeah, we probably should get a picture. Come on in. over here then. Yeah, for some reason this isn't the last thing we're doing, which normally we do the pictures last one. <laughs> And I just want to say one thing I forgot. On November the 16th of this year, the Sedgwick County Commission proclaimed November the 16th as Billy McRae Day. Watch out, please don't fall. And just one, one additional, I, I just want to reiterate what Mayor uh, Whipple has said, and that is we really would like to hear from the community. I'm sure some of you are very familiar. Some of you have probably forgotten some things. But um, if you have any, con any idea or anything that you would like to send to any one of us that are on the committee, actually there's six of us that are on the committee and the other members weren't able to be here, uh, please feel free. And it's Maddie Campbell uh, that is um, staffing the committee from the city's uh, perspective. Thank you. All right, thank you. So now we're going to give an update on Leak 42. This past week, we approved several enhancements to our Wichita parks, including adding artificial turf to Navsker Park, fixing the Edgemore Park Plaza, replacing picnic tables, trash cans, and more throughout our other parks, and a variety of other safety improvements. Uh, we are also excited to move forward with a new project to add a fourth baseball field uh, in McAdams uh, Park for Leak 42. The improvements will will coincide with more parking, which is also, uh, which will, that parking will also serve the Carl G. Brewer Community Center as well. So here to talk a little bit more uh, is our Parks and Recreation Director, Troy, uh, Troy Houtman. Troy. Thank you, Mayor. And Parks and Recreation always has a lot going on. And I also have Bob Lutz here with me. He's gonna share some information. So you know if I'm with Bob, you know we got a lot of things going on. So in the coming weeks, uh, we have some construction starting over at McAdams Park. It's for the additional fourth baseball field that's located on the corner of Wabash and the 15th Street uh, uh, North there. Um, this work is gonna be spearheaded by League 42 to increase the, cap the c capacity for baseball at this location. Uh, we're partnering with League 42 is a commit, I'm sorry. Let me start over again. <laughs> Our partnership with League 42 is a commitment to improve quality of life in Wichita and brings the game of baseball to the youth of Wichita. Much work and planning has been done to add the new baseball field in tandem with the recreation center renovations that we have nearby. Uh, this will include additional parking for the Antoine Carr base or basketball courts. During this work, some trees will be removed, but we're gonna be replacing those trees once the construction is completed. 
We're huge supporters of League 42, and we've made a variety of additional improvements to include improvements to the 17th Street at Ohio and 17th Street uh, from Broadway to I-135. We added uh, League 42 uh, logos, a bike lane, uh, walking paths to help support the park and the activities of League 42. So soon, the park is going to have more activities, it's going to have more um, facilities to really invigorate this whole park even more. So to add more information, we have Bob Lutz. Uh, he's going to tell you a little bit more about the construction that's going to be starting there. Uh, we're really excited about this fourth field. It's going to make a huge difference. Uh, thanks, Troy and Mayor Whipple. We appreciate the opportunity to tell you about uh, some of the advancements we're making in League 42. Uh, we're entering our 10th year, believe it or not, and in those years we've been able to uh, really entice young kids in this community to support us. We have almost 600 kids on 44 teams uh, registered for 2023. Uh, we knew early on that to keep at this pace, we had to add a fourth field. We found a, a great partner in the city of Wichita and Troy and Parks and Rec uh, who saw the value in that. Uh, so we're excited. We think construction will begin very soon, although uh, having delved into some construction with our new uh, learning center, I have discovered that we can never take anything for granted. So. We'll either have a new field next season or in 2050, one of the two. So that's my attempt at humor, and I apologize. <laughs> um, but we are tremendously supportive of the efforts of the city, and we can't wait for this field. It's going to be artificial turf. Our kids are going to love it. Uh, we hope to do some improvements to our two bigger fields in the near future as well. We have the Leslie Rudd Learning Center opening across the street at 1212 East 17th. Within, we hope, the next four to six weeks, that will offer after-school tutoring and reading and math, some programming with uh, law enforcement that we're really excited about, something we're going to call the Passion Project, in which we try to entice our kids to develop a passion, uh, and then some financial literacy courses uh, with Mid-American Credit Union and the Credit Union of America. So a lot of exciting things happening with League 42. They would not be happening without uh, our partnership with the city. So thank you and thank you for support of League 42. That's all I got. Appreciate everything thank you do. All right, thank you, Troy. Thank you, Bob, uh, for all you do to advocate for our kids and our community. And uh, really, League 42 is such an incredible program that uh, not only helps uh, kids who, who are interested in uh, baseball, but also helps our entire community. So thank you for that. So we actually have quite a few parks-ish uh, uh, items here. So Troy will be on hand in case anyone has questions about this. But uh, we, we have a lot going on with parks, and that includes our golf division. So here, tell us. Uh, about a fun open house coming up this weekend is Jesse Kaufman, who is our new director of golf. Jesse. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. Uh, I'm Jesse Kaufman. I'm the director of the golf division, as he said, and I'm here this morning to talk about an event that we're having at Auburn Hills Golf Course this Saturday. Uh, we're calling it the Golf Wichita Holiday Open House. And it's going to be from 4 o'clock to 9 o'clock at the clubhouse at Auburn Hills. Um, this event is open to everyone, not just members and not just golfers. It's open to anyone that would like to come. Um, the goal of this event is to show our appreciation for all the support that, that we receive in the golf division um, and to showcase some of the changes that we're, we're making and highlight some of the changes that we are planning to make over the next few months um, and kind of let everyone know and, and create the excitement for all the good things to come. Um, in Golf Wichita. Um, at Auburn Hills, we've installed new TVs throughout the clubhouse, um, including a, a new big projector screen. Um, and this weekend, there are a lot of uh, big games on TV, bowl games start, um, NFL starting Saturday games as we get close to the playoffs. So we're going to have all that on the TVs for everyone to enjoy. Um, there will be free appetizers, and the appetizers are going to kind of showcase some of the new menu items that we plan to include um, at all of our golf courses. 
Uh, we're going to have drink specials throughout the night. There will be a photo booth set up for you to get your holiday um, photos with you and your family. Um, there's going to be a huge merchandise sale that's part of this event. Um, all of the merchandise at Auburn Hills, and we are going to bring some merchandise over from Tex Consolver Golf Course. Um, huge discounts, uh, up to 50% on all the merchandise, so it's a great time to get your uh, holiday shopping done or just pop in and get yourself something. Um, and even if you're not a golfer, we have a lot of apparel that, that's great for everyone. Um, I'm going to be there all night, and my hope is to you know, get out and, and meet a lot of our, uh, the, the people that, that use our, our golf courses and really get feedback and subject, suggestions from what you guys would like to see into the future of Golf Wichita. Um, again, it's, um, it's the uh, Golf Wichita Holiday Open House. It's this Saturday at Auburn Hills from 4 to 9, open to everyone. And for more information, you can go to our website at golfwichita.com or you can visit our Facebook page, the Golf Wichita Facebook page. So uh, thank you, and I hope to see everyone Saturday night. So another great, um, another great uh, not, not quite golf, but parks uh, announcement is our uh, Evolve catalog is out. So uh, this holiday season, if you look for a option, uh, to uh, learn new skills, rather that is uh, within our, be delivered by our library, or our co cultural arts, uh, and our parks and recreation. Uh, we have uh, some of those classes you could sign up over at our Evolve magazine uh, or catalog that's out there, and some of those include indoor gardening, classes for learning the basics of karate, uh, and there's uh, even new language classes. It's really something for everyone. Uh, so check out our full class guide at wichita.gov slash evolve uh, and check out wichita.gov slash holidays for a full list of all the great gifts and holiday events offered by this city. So finally, I'm excited to announce that the city of Wichita has been designated an American World War II Heritage City by the National Park Services. The American World War II Heritage Cities program honors contributions of towns, cities, and count, uh, counties and commemorates the stories of the men, women, and children who bravely and who bravely shaped uh, the U.S. Uh, home front during World, World War II and still impact our country to this day. As the air capital of the world, Wichita gained great attention and accomplishments during World War II for the development and production of military aircraft. Uh, in 2017, the city donated $900,000 as part of the proceeds from its 20 million sale of the Wichita Hyatt Regency towards the hangar for a dock, the restored Boeing uh, B-29 bomber, which were manufactured here in Wichita during World War II. Wichita built 100, excuse me, built 1,644 B-29 Superfortress bombers, uh, the most of any of the other three B-29 manufacturing facilities. Doc is one of these Wichita-built B-29s and was uh, restored in 2016 thanks to 450,000 volunteer hours uh, over 16 years. The application for this recognition was submitted by Wichita Public Library staff, and I want to thank them for their hard work. Uh, the, I also want to thank some of our partners who submitted letters of support uh, for this, um, for this uh, recognition. That includes uh, Senator Roger Marshalls, S Senator Jerry Moran, Representative Ron Estes, Representative Tracy Mann, Representative uh, Sharice Davis, uh, Representative uh, Jake LaTurner, Dr. Jay Price at Wichita State University, Patty at uh, vet to vet Support Command, um, Denise Sherman at the uh, Kansas African American Museum and Margaret Klein of the Wichita uh, Genealogical Society. So only one world, only one American World War II heritage city can be designated in each state and territory. And here in Wichita, we're happy to be uh, the recipient for the state of Kansas. And with that, we'll take questions really about not just what we covered, but really about anything. Nothing? Cool. Hey, thank you all. Have a great holiday. I uh, really appreciate um, people being here uh, for not just this uh, press conference, but throughout the, the whole year. Uh, see, you, uh, see you after the holidays.